Welcome back to the channel everybody. Now as we know the Premier League transfer window has been shut so the dust is settled. We're going to review every team's business. We're going to grade them from A to F. So without further ado let's get into it. Right if we're starting properly we're going to go with AFC Bournemouth. Their notable ins include Ivan Ilsen, Luis Sinistera, Enes Unal, Julian Araujo and Kepa on loan. In terms of their signings, they bought in some good striker replacements for a player we're about to mention. Kepa on loan. People are hyping this up. I don't think it's that good, personally. I don't think he's as good as his value says. Obviously, we know he's the most expensive goalkeeper of all time at 72 million. But I don't think he is that, personally. But it's a good replacement, considering they did get rid of Neto on loan to Arsenal. That one confused me a little bit. But they bought in a half-decent keeper, a younger keeper anyway. Keeping with the outs, obviously we know they got rid of Dominic Solanke to Spurs for 65 million. Good money for their top player. But if Evan Nielsen and Unal can equal that goal output or better it, we'll have to see as the season goes on. Uh, they got rid of Lloyd Kelly on a free to Newcastle. Bournemouth fans, if you're going to miss him, let me know. But I don't think they've improved their squad, personally. I really don't think they have. Obviously, if you disagree with anything I say in this video or you agree, comment down below. And for that, I'm going to go, I'm going to be harsh. I'm going to start off harsh. I'm giving them a D. They've spent good money, but I don't really think they've improved their team. On to Arsenal next. They bought in, obviously, Ricardo Cagliafiori from Bologna. They finalised the deal for David Rea. I think he's a quality goalkeeper. They signed Mikel Moreno. That, again, was another good signing. And then they bought in Raheem Sterling. That was a little bit of a shot. They bought in Neto on loan, which, again, was a bit of a confusing move, but it's good backup to have. They had a few good outs uh, this summer. Obviously, Emil Smith-Rowe to Fulham, along with Reese Nelson to Fulham on loan. So they got rid of Eddie Nketiah, and they got rid of Aaron Ramsdale, and they loaned out Fabio Vieira. Didn't sign a striker. I do think they need that lights out number nine that's going to get you 15, 20 goals to see a, a season. But they got good fees for players that weren't going to get a lot of game time. Got rid of Ramsdale and Ketia, Smith Rowe. They got good fees for these players. Like I said, they didn't sign a striker. And I don't think Havertz or Jesus is that man. Uh, Raheem Sterling, we don't know how that's going to go. It could be one of the worst loan signings in Premier League history. Or it could be another Lingard to West Ham situation. We're yet to tell. Pure business alone, I'm giving them a B. Like I said, good outs for players aren't playing, but they didn't sign that number nine who might push them over the line in terms of winning trophies. Up next is Champions League new boys Aston Villa. Their notable signings in is obviously Amadou Onana from Everton, Ian Matson, Jaden Philogene, and I've put Ross Barkley because he was very well hyped at the end of last season. Apparently loads of teams are after him, so it's kind of a good sign in that sense. Now on to their outs. Obviously the two big ones, Douglas Louise and Moussa Diaby. The Moussa Diaby one did, a, did come out of nowhere, but when you realise it is Saudi, it's hard to keep players at your club when Saudi come knocking. And Alex Moreno on loan, who I didn't think was that bad for him. Uh, they received £145 million in total fees, so still not in profit. I do think they replaced their departure as well. And I do personally think Onana is an upgrade on Douglas Luiz. I mean, like I said, I'm not grading him on playtime, but he has scored three go two goals in three games. And I just think he's better defensively than Douglas Luiz. The signing of Matson as well, loads of teams were after him after his performances with Dortmund. To get him in was really good. And obviously, that's the left-back slot covered for quite a while now. But yeah, I'm going to stick with an A for Aston Villa. On to the Bs now, Brentford. They obviously signed Igor Thiago. He is now injured for, I want to say, up until December or January. They signed Liverpool duo Sepp Vandenberg and Fabio Carvalho. And an 18-year-old winger, Gustavo Nunes. I'm not a fan of the signings, I'm not going to lie. Fabio Carvalho could turn out good. He started on fire at Liverpool and then just suddenly was not playing everyone was confused about that he's still young time could tell a little bit of an overpayment in my opinion but if he hits the ground running at Brentford could be a steal you never know they're notable out so obviously David Raya to Arsenal who I previously mentioned for 32 million it's not too bad for a player that didn't want to be there and Ivan Tony to Al Ali now this whole saga just fell flat in the end didn't it I think in the end everyone got tired of it was he gonna? Who was he gonna leave for? And obviously, he's gone and chased a bag out in Saudi. I, I just, like I said, it just fell flat in the end. We didn't know where he was gonna end up. It became very tiresome. But they've played. They've been playing well, Brentford. But like I said, can't judge it on their performances. Just their business. And for that, I'm giving them a D. 
like I said, they overspent on average players and they didn't get the money they wanted for Tony. You know, they wanted 100 million at the start of the season. Then they dropped it to 60 million, then 50 million. And now they've just accepted 40 and it's just a bit of an anti-climax. So for that, I'm giving them a D. Sorry, Brentford. From the Bs to the Seagulls now, we're on to Brighton. Second biggest spenders in, tr in this transfer window. I think that's gone under the radar a little bit. 231 million. Their notable ins include Jorginho Ruta, Yakuba Minza, Ferdi Kadioglu, and Matt O'Reilly, who unfortunately got injured in his debut for the club. Um, I like the Minza signing. There's a lot of hype surrounding him from Newcastle. And I know we're not judging it on performances like I keep saying, but he, he has looked positive. He looked very fast. He looked very direct. Ruta, I'm not too sure about. Played in the Prem before for Leeds. Didn't set the league alight. I think it's a, it's a very big overpayment for him. Let's look at their outs. Dennis Undav, Billy Gilmore, Pascal Gross. I'm not a fan of their outs. Undav, it was okay for Brighton. Obviously, he wasn't, you know, that, that striker that's going to score loads of goals a season. But he did okay, or well, from when I watched him anyway. I'm not a fan of the, of the Gross signing to Dortmund. I'm not a fan of it. Um, arguably their best player. I don't think that's a hot take. And to lose him for just £7 million, that's not good enough for me. I would say they only received forty eight million in fees from other clubs. I'm not a fan of these of these signings personally. Yeah, so for their business, I'm being harsh probably. I'm giving them a D. Obviously the manager's been heavily backed, but I don't think he's improved the team. I really don't. On to Chelsea. The biggest spenders of the transfer window. Are we really shocked anymore? Let's look at their signings. Pedro Neto, Xao Felix, Kiernan Dewsbury Hall, Philip Jorgensen, a goalkeeper, I think about their seventh goalkeeper. Tossing Adarabayo on a free, and Jaden Sancho on a loan. Again, that, like the Raheem Sterling to Arsenal, could be hit or miss. We'll just have to wait and see. But on the face of it, it's not good, it's not bad. I mean, they spent nearly 250 million. I mean, that is crazy. They're out. There is a lot of outs. Uh, obviously, Ian Matson that we've already mentioned. Conor Gallagher. I mean, it's good money for who I think is an average player. Sorry, that I've said my opinions about Conor Gallagher before. But again, yeah, good money. Um, Lewis Hall, Romelu Lukaku, Amari Hutchinson. So they, re they loaned out Raheem Sterling to Arsenal. They got rid of Armando Brogia. Got rid of Trevor Chalobah. And obviously, Kepa. These signings don't impress me. Pedro Neto, yeah, very good player for Wolves, but also very injury prone. Jao Felix, is it too late to start calling him a flop? Just in general. You know, signed for over 100 million to Atletico and hasn't really done anything. I know he scored in his second debut for Chelsea, but I just don't get it. Uh, Dewsbury Hall, I think, is a worse Conor Gallagher. You're not even going to get half the output of Conor Gallagher. Adarabio on a free is good, I suppose. Signed from rivals Fulham. Even if he flops, you can sell him on. I don't like Chelsea's business. They haven't fixed the mess that is still going on. Like I said, I think they've still got about six or seven goalkeepers. It's just crazy they've got to surely get a transfer ban at some point because this is ridiculous when you're letting players like Raheem Sterling I know he hasn't performed well for Chelsea but the experience he brings and you've loaned him out to a rival nah I'm I'm not a fan of that yeah I'm giving him a D because like I said it's still a mess at the club there's still so many players there but yeah sorry Chelsea right on to Crystal Palace now they signed obviously Eddie Nketiah who we mentioned so I'm Maxence Lacroix Ismail Lassar Chaddy Riyad, Trevor Chalabar on loan, as previously mentioned, and they signed Daichi Kamada on a free. I don't mind these signings. Eddie Nketiah I'm still not convinced about as a Premier League striker, and I do think £30 million is an overpayment. I really think it's an overpayment. Ismail Lassar signing I like. I do like him as a player. Very quick. Obviously done very well for Watford in the Premier League. Lacroix a good, good replacement, because obviously they did lose some centre-backs, who will go on to talk about in a second. And Daichi Kamada, who Glasner's worked with in the past, so, you know, he'll... You'll know how to get the best out of him. Their outs, obviously, Michael Elise to Bayern. Yakim Anderson. That was a shock. I remember going on social media and seeing he'd sign for Fulham. That was a bit out of nowhere. They got rid of Sam Johnston. Jordan Ayew. Jordan Ayew, I understand. I mean, he hasn't ripped up any trees the whole time he's been at Palace. And obviously, they've loaned out Odson Edouard. And they received uh, £100 million for their signings. So, they're in profit. So, that's always a good, good sign. I'm giving them a B. Uh, they replaced their losses well. But they kept Mark Gahey. That's going to be quite big for them coming into this season. And they managed to keep Eze, despite interest from clubs. I'm very surprised. Even the chairman of Crystal Palace was surprised that Eze wasn't getting any lookers. 
because he is a talented player. But yeah, I'll give him a B. Like I said, they replaced their losses well, and they kept two of their star players. On to Everton now, and their notable signings include Jake O'Brien, Illiman Ndai, Jesper Lindstrom on a loan, and Aurel Mangala on loan. I'm not a fan of these signings, to be honest. Um, Illiman and Dyer, obviously, play for Sheffield United, was recently out in the French League. And when I looked, his numbers don't jump out. And I think Everton are in for a tough season. I don't think these players are the players to keep him up. Jake O'Brien, he's been very hyped. But Sean Dyche continues to stick with Tarkovsky and Kane as centre-backs. And I don't think it's, it's working. But let's look at their routes. Obviously, Amadou Onana to Villa for about 60 million. That's good. Uh, they got rid of Ben Godfrey to Atalanta. Wasn't really a favourite of Deitch, so to get over 10 million for a player you're not using, it's actually good business by Everton for once. Who, who would have who would have thought? Uh, Neil Neil Mopai out on loan to Marseille. Um, he was very thankful to leave if we uh, if we saw social media. So you know it's not too bad of an out getting rid of a player who don't want to be there and just causes trouble. And they got rid of Mason Holgate, another player who wasn't the best. So I do like their outs, but they haven't improved their starting eleven, and it is in desperate need of improvement. And I'm giving them a D. I don't think these players are the players to keep them up. I, I don't think they are. If they do, it'll be another lucky survival. Right, on to Fulham now. Uh, bringing in the likes of Emil Smith-Rowe. Brilliant signing for them. Everyone was a fan of that signing. And I do think Smith-Rowe is a quality player and he deserved game time. Signed Joachim Anderson from Crystal Palace. Very reliable Premier League centre-back. I like that signing. Sander Burge. I'm not too sure about that. He obviously played for Sheffield United previously and Burnley in the Premier League, and he's been relegated with both of them. Don't think that is the Yale Polinia replacement they needed, but he's got experience playing in the Prem. So, obviously, they brought back Ryan Sessegnon. Maybe he can rediscover his old spark that he did a couple years ago. And they've loaned in Reese Nelson. So, you know, a, a former teammate of Smith Rose, played in London. It's a good loan signing. I, I can't begrudge it. Let's look at it out. Um, obviously, losing Yale Polinia was a big loss to Bayern Munich. They got rid of Jay Stansfield to Birmingham for 18 million, according to Transfer Marts. I mean, it's a League One record fee, I do believe, from what I saw on social media. So that's good. He obviously wasn't a part of Marco Silva's plans. So to get rid of him for that sort of fee to that sort of club, brilliant move. Obviously, tossing Adarabio on a free. I've let go of a few players on a free. Uh, Bobby Deckard over Reed to Leicester, Willian to Olympiacos, and Tim Ream to Charlotte in the MLS. I'm giving them a B. I could push them up to an A, but I don't think they replaced Paulinia very well. But I'm going to stick with a B. Right, on to one of the promoted teams. On to Ipswich now. Um, they've been big spenders. £126 million spent. And some notable wins obviously include Amari Hutchinson. Played well for them on loan last season. Liam Delap from Man City's Academy. Sammy Schmodix. I was impressed with that signing. And as you know, if you haven't seen the video, I did recommend him for Ipswich so just saying I could be a scout uh, they signed Arjunet Muric obviously from Burnley Shadozi Ogbeni from Luton uh, Ben Johnson on a free from my club West Ham and they got Calvin Phillips on loan I like some of these signings I like the Schmodic signing I like the Ogbeni signing I like the Ben Johnson signing and this is the latest chapter in Calvin Phillips's potential downfall sadly um, playing for a newly promoted team um, they're out. Majority of their sales were frees and loans to lower leagues, but obviously they was upgrading the squad, which they've done. They've severely upgraded their squad. Ben Johnson, specifically, I know you're going to say oh, it's West Ham bias, but he's still quite young. Premier League experience, European experience, won the Conference League. It's a good signing on a free, especially for a club like Ipswich. And of course, Sammy Schmodix, the Championship top goal scorer. So if they do go back down. They know they've got someone proven to bang in the goals in that league. But they did overspend quite a bit on some players. And that's why I'm giving them a C. I was tempted to go for a B, but they've overspent. I mean, nearly 20 million on Liam Delap, an academy player. Murich for 10 million, who I don't think is that good. He's very error prone. Ogbené, 10 million. Eh, you, people would argue it either way. They've overspent, but they have upgraded their squad. But is it enough to keep them up? I'm not too sure. Next up is another promotion team. Got Leicester. Uh, they spent nearly 90 million in the summer, bringing in Oliver Skitt, Jordan Ayew, Bobby Deckard over Reed, Austin Eduard on loan, and Facundo Buonanotte on loan. 
They're all right ins, I suppose. The loans of Buonanotte and Eduard are quite good. Jordan Ayew, I'm not a fan of his personally. Deckled over Reed, good squad option, but again, isn't going to rip up any trees. Um, they only received 36 million, and that was for one player, which is obviously Keenan Dewsbury Hall to Chelsea. They've let Kielecci and Nacho go on a free to Sevilla, and that's it really in terms of notable outs. For me, there's been no upgrades, and do I think they'll survive? I'm not too sure. But the loans of Eduard and Buonanotte are quite good. Some quite talented players, and if it clicks at Leicester, could be brilliant. So for that, I'm giving them a D, just because they haven't really upgraded their squad. Right, on to Arna Slot's Reds Liverpool now. Only the two signings. Signing of Giorgi Marmashtabili from Valencia for 30 million. And uh, Federico Chiesa from Juventus for 12 million. But with Liverpool, it's hard to upgrade their squad. And as we've seen in the last three game weeks, they've been really good. So it's hard to upgrade, really. They're out, obviously... Got rid of Sepp Vandenberg and Fabio Carvalho to Brentford for a combined nearly 50 million. So to get 50 million for two players you're not using, brilliant business. They released Joel Matip, Thiago retired. I originally graded him a D, but now I've said these points out loud, I'm going to push him up to a C. Um, it's a good price for Chiesa, but he hasn't really been in form since 2019 to 2021. So we don't know how it's going to go, but you never know. He could be brilliant for Liverpool. Marmash de is a good signing for the future. It's a good signing, especially the hype he drummed up after the Euros. But they didn't sign that lights out number six that they've been needing since Fabinho, really. So otherwise, if they signed a six, they'd probably get a grade B or a grade A. But because they didn't sign a six, they got players that they didn't really need to upgrade. But yeah, I'll, I'll give them a C. I'll be nice and I'll give them a C. Right, on to last season champions, Manchester City. They only spent £25 million, which is weird for Man City. But they only really signed Savinho, obviously, for that £25 million, And obviously they re-signed Ilkay Gundogan on a free. I can't really complain about his signs, to be fair. Gundogan was let go kind of weirdly by Barcelona. The City fans love him, he loves Man City. Just makes sense. I mean, why not? That sort of player who's played well for you in the past and still has that ability clearly on a free, go for it. Why not? Brilliant signing by City, really. Well, brilliant re-signing. And they're out. Obviously, they got rid of Julian Alvarez for 75 million to Atletico Madrid. They got rid of Yao Cancelo for 25 million to Al Halal. Taylor Harwood Bellis to Southampton. Sergio Gomez, Tommy Doyle, and Calvin Phillips on a loan. They got rid of players. They didn't need or were causing problems. So yeah, good good money, especially for Alvarez. But they didn't really make any lights out signings. Maybe that's because they've got a settled squad now. They're all playing well together. But I've got to grade them on signings and they didn't really make a lot. I'll give them a B. It's Man City. They can't really improve their team. It's hard. But yeah, like I said, they got rid of players they didn't need. And they got good money for them, like I've already said. So I'm happy to give them a B. But if you feel any different, just feel free to comment down below. Man City, you're getting a bit. On to their City neighbours now, Manchester United. Now, they spent £215 million pounds this window. But also they signed Lenny Euro, Manuel Ugarte, Matthias De Ligt, Joshua Xerxes, and Nazwa Maraz Araoui. Good signings. I mean, Lenny Euro could be anything. The boy's only 18, which is crazy. And he's already injured, but again, not his fault. Ugarte's got a lot of pressure on him coming into this team. Obviously, with the performances of Casemiro recently, he could come in and be brilliant, or he could just be another Manchester United flop. De Ligt, I'm still undecided on this man. Um, brilliant at Ajax, but ever since, he's sort of underperformed, I think. Joshua Xerxes, again, could be anything. Obviously, started off brilliantly, getting a goal against Fulham. And the other games, he's just been a bit flat, but he is still young, so you've got to give these players time. And Masrao, he's done all right. He hasn't ripped up any trees, but... It's solid. On to their outgoings now. They received 103 million. Uh, the likes of Scott, Mato Scott McTominay. I was a bit baffled at that one. I, I think he's a decent player. He's not going to rip up any trees, but he's going to work hard and he's going to put a shift in. Don't think they should have got rid of him. They got rid of, obviously, Mason Greenwood to Marseille. Aaron wan to my club, West Ham. Rafael Varane on a free. And Jaden Sancho on loan to Chelsea. I'm going to give him a C. Obviously, got good names in. Like Ugarte, like Xerxes, like De Ligt. But the sales have been terrible. Aaron wan for nearly 20 million. They bought him for more than double that. It's, it's crazy. But this is what Man United do. Yeah, sorry Man United, you're getting a C. Right, on to the Magpies. Next, Newcastle. Um, Sort of a flat window for Newcastle. I know there's obviously PSR issues and they can't really go splurging out on players. But they only spent 68 million. Um, and that was on Lewis Hall 
and Odysseus Vlakodimos. And then obviously Lloyd Kelly on a free. Smart signing. Um, adds to centre back depth. None of these players jump out at me. But it's a very flat window, like I said. And their outgoings, that was for Elliot Anderson for 41 million, according to Transfer Marked, and Yakuba Minza for 35 million. A lot of people were upset about the uh, Minter sale, and I can see why. After his performances for Brighton, could be a big loss for Newcastle. Sorry, Newcastle, I'm going to have to be harsh. I'm going to have to give you an E. Um, no upgrade to the squad, and they've overpaid for Lewis Hall. Um, 33 million on Lewis Hall. I've I don't know how personally. Vlakodimos for twenty four million. If he was to overtake Nick Pope, I'd understand it. But is he going to? I don't think so. Um, yeah, sorry Newcastle. I'll have to give you an E. On to Nottingham Forest now. Let's start with their in. They spent one hundred eight million. Typical Nottingham Forest sp- splurging money. But they haven't bought in a million and one player this time. Their notable signings obviously Elliot Anderson for forty one million according to transfer marked, and Nikola Milinkovic for fourteen million. Which I was really impressed with. He'd been linked to the Premier League for a long time. He's six foot five, played in the Euros for Serbia, um, played a lot of games for Fiorentina as well. So yeah, I'm quite impressed with that signing. It's unlike Nottingham Forest to make smart signings. James Will Prowse on loan from my club West Ham. I wasn't too sure about that from our perspective. I thought he was a good player for us. And look at it out. So Moussini Akate for 32 million to Leon. They got rid of Mangala to Leon, who then loaned him to Everton. They got rid of Matt Turner, who wasn't a good player for them. I'm going to give him a B. I could drop it down to a C because they did overpay for Anderson uh, by a lot. But the Milenkovic signing and Ward Prowse signing is quite positive. And it's unlike Nottingham Forest, but they've still got quite a big squad. So for that, I'm going to give him a B. On to the Saints next, Southampton. Uh, they spent nearly £120 million in the window, uh, signing the likes of Taylor Harwood Bellis. Aaron Ramsdale, I was really impressed with that signing. Flynn Downs from West Ham. Ben Brereton Diaz from Sheffield United. Adam Lalana on a free. Leslie Ugachukwu and Maxwell Cornet on loan. Decent signings. Ramsdale, I was really impressed with. Do think he could have gone to a bigger team, but there you go. He's going to get first team football, isn't he? They're out. They lost Carlos Alcaraz for 18 million. Uh, Sekumara for 12 million. Duja Kaleta Carr. And Che Adams and Stuart Armstrong on freeze there's decent names in there but don't think it's enough to keep them up i mean if they do stay up it'll be close but yeah i do like some of the names but apart from ramsdale there's not any names that are gonna push them up and you know make teams wary of southampton i just, I just don't see it so southampton i'm giving you a c probably a bit harsh i know signing of ramsdale could probably push them up to a b but i'm gonna stick with a c on to tottenham hotspur now and their notable ins obviously include dominic solanke Archie Gray and Wilson Oderbear. Um Dominic Solanke, I like. Obviously played really well for Bournemouth last season. Archie Gray, bit of an overpayment for an 18-year-old. But if he turns out to be a good signing, could be quality. And Wilson Oderbear, I kind of understand. But is he a Tottenham-level signing? I, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Um, there's a lot of outs for Tottenham. And these players include Oliver Skip, obviously, to Leicester. Emerson to AC Milan. Giovanni Lo Celso. And they let go... Five players on freeze. Eric Dyer, Ryan Sessegnon, Tanguy Undombele, who was before Solanke their record signing, Ivan Perisic and Jaffet Tanganga. And they've let go of Hoybieg, Brian Gill and Manor Solomon on loans. I'm giving them a C. Um, they let go of useful squad depth and the only quality they bought in was Solanke, really. Um, no real improvement to the starting eleven. But they did get good fees for Skip and Emerson. Recently, I think the AC Milan executive or a journalist commented on Emerson playing for AC Milan, calling him a charity case. So that says a lot, doesn't it, really? Uh, 15 million for a bang average or below average wing back. It's a good fee. And Oliver Skip, who I think is an average player, for nearly 30 million. Yeah, it's good fees. So for that, I am going to give Tottenham a C. If they didn't get those fees, they'd be a lot lower ranked. But yeah, Tottenham Hotspur. You are getting a C. Right, on to my club, West Ham. Um, we spent £144 million in the window, bringing in the likes of Max Kilman, Criencio Somerville. I have probably butchered that. I do apologise. Uh, Nicholas Fulkrug, Luis gil Aaron Wan-Bissaka, Jean-Claire Tadebo on a loan, and Grido Rodriguez on a free. Quality defensive midfielder in La Liga. And Carlos Soler on loan from PSG. The Soler loan I'm not too sure about, personally. Obviously, Ward-Prowse, who is one of our outs, obviously went to Nottingham Forest, he's 
Premier League proven. He doesn't shine every game, but he's brilliant at set pieces. We know what he offers. Will we get that from Soler? Who knows? But will we get more flair? Again, who knows? It's it's a little bit confusing for me, but the rest of our outs, Flynn Downs, Saeed Benrama, Tilo Kera, Divin Mubama, Agued on loan, Zuma on loan, Corne on loan, Ben Johnson and Angelo Ogbonna on freeze. Uh, we only received 45 million, so didn't make profit, but we've improved our squad massively. I mean, these are brilliant, adventurous signings. Um, Nicholas Fulkrug, I'm not too sure about yet. Obviously, he performed well for Dortmund at the back end of last season and for Germany in the Euros for the time they was in the tournament. But knowing our history with big strikers, it, it could go anyway. He could be a roaring success or he could be another flop. We don't know yet. It's still too soon to tell. I like the sign of Aaron wan I've been a big fan of his, like I said, the Jean-Claire Tadebo sign, signing. Brilliant, out of nowhere. Brilliant hijacking. Didn't think West Ham would be a team to do that, but we did. And for that, I know I'm going to get comments of bias, but it's my opinion. I'm giving, I'm giving us an A. Like I said, brilliant positive signings. We added depth and quality. I'm not a fan of the Ward-Prowse loan and the Johnson fee free deal to Ipswich, but considering we bought in Wambasaka and we've got Kufau, I can make my peace with it. I can make my peace with it. Last but not least, on to Wolves. Not any players that are going to rip up any trees. Andre... Rodrigo Gomez, Sam Johnston, and Tommy Doyle on a permanent from Man City. Their outgoings are a little bit better. They received 112 million, letting Pedro Neto go for 60 million, getting rid of a injury prone player. Quite good. They obviously lost Max Kilman to us, to West Ham, uh, for 40 million. I mean, considering he was your captain, that's a big loss. They let go of Daniel Podence for 5 million, and they've loaned out Fabio Silva again, who is more and more, season by season, looking. Like an awful, awful signing. But who knows, one day it could just click. I'm giving them a D. I think if they didn't get the big fees for Neto and Kilman, they'd probably be an F. Because they haven't upgraded their starting eleven. I don't think. And they've lost two key players. Sorry, Wolves. You're getting a D. Before we end the video, I'm going to award a transfer window winner and a transfer window loser. So which team did the best business, made the best signings, and which team obviously didn't. Let's start with the losers first. I'm between Everton and Newcastle. I'm going to be harsh and I'm going to give it to Everton because Newcastle still have a half-decent squad that they can play with. Everton, I feel, don't. So, sorry, Everton, you are the losers of this transfer window. And the winners. I can already see the comments I'm going to get, but I'm going to go with West Ham. The signings, like I said, positive, brilliant. We're showing, you know, forward thinking, positive thinking. Signing decent young players, not over-the-hill players as we used to. So, yeah, let me know who you think won the transfer window and who lost it. Have I been a bit too harsh? Am I showing too much bias towards West Ham? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We're not close, but we're getting to 10k subscribers. We'd love for that to happen. So keep pressing subscribe, commenting, sharing. Be very appreciated. Uh, we'll see you in the next one, guys. See you later.